You can now train your own AI art model in Flux using OpenArt.ai. And although it's really easy to do, the results are actually pretty awesome. It's a pretty simple process with a few clicks, uploading a few images, and then OpenArt will actually train the model for you in their web interface. Now, OpenArt are the sponsor of today's video, and there's a link in the description if you want to check it out. Otherwise, I'm going to jump in and we're going to show you exactly how this works and just how easy it is to create your own model in Flux. Now, it's pretty straightforward to start once you're logged in. Simply head over to the left here, down to Models. And where it says My Models, just click Train Your Own Model here. Now, from there, you actually have a few options. You can train a style, character, face, or object. Now, all of these that you actually select have the same process, except there's some of them, like the face, don't require you to add a description. But otherwise, you need to describe the style, describe the, describe the character, or describe the object with each one. With the face, basically leaving that out. So we're gonna start off by training an object. And to show you what we'll be training, I have this object, which is a cassette tape with the words love song written on the front. We'll see how well it handles it. So again, we've got our object and we're gonna give the model a name. I'm gonna call it love songs cassette tape. And we're gonna give it a description to help guide open art in the training of this model. So I'm gonna type in something like, I have an old retro music cassette tape with love songs handwritten on the label a clear plastic cassette tape, just to give open art an idea of what it is I'm looking for. Now I wanna upload four to 64 images and the more images, the better. However, I only have a handful of images, so let's see how well it handles it. But also not safe for work model training is not supported with this platform. So you gotta keep it pretty clean and the images should be at least 384 by 384 pixels. So here I can click to upload some images or I can drag and drop. So I have my images here. I'm just going to select them all, drag them in. You can see they've all been uploaded. Now I just click train your model. You can see here the model will be training. Give it about five or 10 minutes to go through. And now my model has finished training. I can click on create and it will automatically apply that model to the image generation page so I can start creating with it. However, I can also publish this model so that other people on OpenRAI can find this and use it for themselves. But I'm actually not going to create here because I wanna show you that if you head back out into create image, we get our image creation page. And here you can see my model is OpenR SDXL. I click switch, go to my models up the top here. And here is the model I just trained. I click on that. And now I can choose to actually create an image with this model. I'm gonna actually keep the same prompt, which is the description to generate an image. We're gonna explore this a little bit further. So I'm going to basically hit copy, paste that in just to see what we get. I'm going to make the aspect ratio square. I'm going to produce three images. You notice it's five credits per image. So this is a little higher than usual, but because of the customization, it is a little bit higher, but it is worth it for the quality we get and the control. I click create and we have three very similar looking images. You notice it says love songs written across the top. It's even added in some information on the label down here. I go across, we still got love songs written there. A little bit on the label, it's a little bit different. Same again. So you're gonna notice a few things. One, I've noticed straight away that it has the little orange tabs on the tape and the orange tabs down the bottom here, which were consistent on all the images I uploaded and this top label. This label here is not identical, but not really super important as the main thing, the main focus of this is literally the label here and the look of the tape. If I scroll back through, we've got the orange circles, orange circles and orange tabs. So that is incredibly consistent and very detail focused. But what happens if we try a few different prompts? What results do we get? So again, we have the original image and the prompt is just simply an old retro music cassette tape with love songs, handwritten on the label, clear plastic tape. And this looks like an actual photograph apart from a few little elements on that bottom sticker. So I decided to pop it in the sand and I love the way it changed the angle a little bit. As it says here, cassette tape sitting in the sand outside of the beach. So the, the fact that it's actually changed the angle a little bit is really cool. And the only inconsistency again is that bottom label. Everything else is spot on and otherwise looks like pretty much like a photograph. I then decided to enhance the prompt and see what else I can get. And I got this much nicer framed image of the cassette tape in the sand as well. 
I continue to try a few different settings, like a large pile of cassette tapes sitting in front of a boombox in an outdoor urban area. You can see we've got these cassette tapes sitting in front of our main one, boombox behind, and that looks pretty legit. So then I thought, what if I have someone holding the cassette tape, like a cyberpunk warrior, some kind of uh, outlandish, non-realistic setting, and it did a pretty good job. The tape is a little big, but overall, it's done a pretty good job of placing it in the hand as it doesn't really have any reference for size. Now, I also tried to create a robot with a face a cassette tape for a face, and uh, unfortunately I got this. Didn't quite turn out the way I liked it, but I had a good chuckle and thought I'd share it anyway. But it shows you just how consistent it keeps the object. But another interesting thing is I simply prompted for a waterfall outside with bright sunshine, and because I'm using that model, it still placed the object in there. But check out how the transparency of the tape seems to remain consistent with the background. The AI understands all well, not only the finer details, but the fact that the tape is transparent and it brings some of that background through, which is really, really cool. This time I tried something a little unique, which was an ancient pyramid sized cassette tape artifact being found in the deserts of Egypt. And it kind of just popped it in the sand, so it could be as big or as little as your imagination really wants here. So I then added a tiny little person and then enhanced the prompt, and I got this pretty insane image. And once again, the way the light shines off it, the sun, the way it takes the angle of the cassette tape and places the person in front of it, I was really, really impressed with this image. And overall, it's just a really impressive tool to use to create very customized AI art. So you can see just how simple it is to train a model with this platform. And this is really useful because if you want to create art around a certain object, character or face, you can do this. But also, if you're someone who works in a creative industry, whether you're a creative artist, graphic designer, that kind of thing, this is a great way to very easily be able to create what you need for the designs or the work that you actually need to create. Now, keep in mind the process is pretty much the same, whether you choose a style or a face, it's pretty much just what images you upload. So I'm gonna cut forward and show you some of the models I've been able to train and the results I was able to get with those models. Now you see here I have four models and one is still currently training for my character model, which is the Lego Stormtrooper. But I also created a style model for Graffiti Toon and this one I call Lollipop Man for uh, like basically a face model. Now one thing to remember is if I come over here to these three dots in the top right corner of any of these models, I can show the training images. And you can see what I've used here for the cassette tape. The others have a lot more in them. We can also come in, click edit, and change some of the information here as well. But what I really want to look at is the face model for now, or my lollipop man. And to give you an idea of what to expect, here are some of the training images I used on the lollipop man, and I got them all from Pexels again, so I kind of want to keep some consistency while also using royalty-free images. So this time I will go straight to create. You see all the images we've created, and we've also got our lollipop man here ready to go. So what I'm gonna simply do is just type in a really basic prompt to see what I get. I have a portrait of a man eating a lollipop. Now I wanna also mention, I also wanna mention I can adjust the weight of this as well. This can be good to adjust the influence of the model on the images you create. So you can sort of tone it up or tone it down. Otherwise, we're gonna leave it at default for now to see what we get. I'm gonna start off by creating one image and straight away you can see he's reminiscent of our model. However, the hair color is a little bit different, but otherwise the jacket, the facial expressions are all pretty close. If I put them side by side, you get a better idea of what I mean. But coming back, I'm gonna bring that weight up to full to see if we get any difference in our result. And again, we got our character here. So if I really wanna get that hair blonde like the other images, I may need to add in something like, I've got a portrait of a man with blonde hair eating a lollipop and create. Now what we got is pretty reminiscent of our training set. And I also want to mention just how photo-like this is. And one of the things I, that you may notice a lot in AI is things like textures can be very repetitive. With this flux model, things seem to be a little less uniform and therefore a little bit more convincing, which I think is a really cool insight into how well this model seems to work. But otherwise, let's see what else we can throw at this model. And uh, we'll go through a few example images that we can check out and see how successful our uh, face model has gone. So I popped him in a business suit, made him looking angry. And you can see it's kind of there. So I tried changing it over to sad. It doesn't look too sad here, but it's still kind of there. But happy works really quite well. But I do think taking a little bit more time with your prompting, you could probably squeeze a little bit more emotion out of these images. So then I tried to have a little bit more fun with the images. So I turned him into a Sith Lord with a red lightsaber. And I think that one worked out pretty well. 
I try turning him into a statue. Looks a little bit like a statue that's kind of half alive, a little bit creepy, but still kind of keeps those uh, elements. When I popped him into a mech suit, though, because the character strength was a little high, it actually put the suit or the jacket he was wearing over the mech armor. So this time I decided to bring that character strength down, and the armor has the same color as his clothes, but it's actually metallic. So this is a good reason to adjust that model weight when generating images. But if I bring the model strength down to zero and make a Pixar cartoon, he's basically non-existent at all. So I brought the model strength up to 0.2, and still doesn't really look like him. I bring it up again to 0.4 and the hair starts to creep in. And as I slowly increase it, we get 0.6. He's starting to look a little bit more like him. He's got the jacket and everything. Still, the face isn't quite there, but then by 0.8, which is the default setting, he has returned. I bring it up to full and naturally, of course, he's pretty close to our original character. So you can see how that model strength works when generating images. But keep in mind again, if I was to prompt a little bit further for his ethnicity and appearance inside the prompt, Having that in the character model would definitely help get a more Pixar-like version of that character. But now we're gonna switch models again. Head up to my models and choose the Graffiti Tune style model and start creating with that. And these are some of the images I used. I uploaded about 40 images. So this is basically what the data set looks like. So then I created the following images. So I decided to keep the prompt the same as what we did with the man with blonde hair as a Pixar cartoon character. And I got this cool image. And because of the graffiti styles of the images I uploaded, we get some pretty consistent designs regarding the prompt. It just keeps it very bright, vibrant, and colorful. And I essentially uploaded a bunch of cartoony graffiti designs that I found on Pexel. So with all these images here, you can see the kind of results you were able to get pretty easily. But I also tried experimenting with something else. But we can also take an image like this man pointing his finger in an upward direction and sort of use image to image to take advantage of this style model also. So I have my graffiti tune style model selected. I also want to bring my style strength up to full. I'm gonna come back to the prompt in a minute because what I'm gonna do is go image to image under image guidance, drag in the photo. And I also wanna make sure that I bring the creativity level up. Otherwise it will tend to rely more on the photo. So I'll bring it up to about so just below 90, about 0.88. And you will have to try and adjust this depending on the image and the style you're using to sort of fine tune and get the result you're after. But otherwise I describe the image, but I try not to describe the style because I want the style model to be what takes over. I just describe what I wanna see, which is a bald man pointing his finger up. So I've got my model at full strength to really get that style in there. I've got my prompt describing my image and I've also added a little creativity so it strays away from the image just a little bit. I'm gonna click create, but also as a demonstration, I'm going to bring this up to full. So creativity, creativity level of one. So I'm gonna show you the difference when we create the next image also. And with our image to image creativity level of 0.88, we get this, which is a bit of an interpretation. It's not exactly what we're after, but it's kind of a bit of a crossroads between the two. And again, you could probably keep adjusting your prompt Reroll a few times to see what you get. But when I crank that creativity level up to one, it goes completely off. So this is something that's pretty interesting, could be worth using and experimenting with. But in the future, if they bring in things like edge to image in Flux, you probably find you get much better results that way. But still, it's interesting to see what we can do with this particular uh, model. But let's try our Lego Stormtrooper model as a character model in our final test. Again, you'll see some of the images on the screen here, which I used to train the model. And these are the results we got with the following prompts. So I tried a Stormtrooper fighting a bear and actually got a Lego bear, which I thought was pretty cool. Also a Stormtrooper powerlifting, classic deadlift at the Olympics, but also a war-torn Stormtrooper, which doesn't look any different. So I brought the character model weight down a little and they actually add a little bit of a war-torn element to the top. I tried playing with some styles, such as ink dripping drawing, to get this really cool Lego ink dripping drawing, and a stormtrooper chasing a Jedi in a cyberpunk city with neon lights. But also I tried just typing in waterfall, and again, it popped the character in the scene and did a pretty good job. So without even mentioning the character or the stormtrooper, it manages to pop it in the scene pretty well. So with that in mind, I decided to just prompt for a soldier this time and I brought the model strength to zero and you'll notice how it is a little different. The model still puts a Lego figure in there. It's just not the exact same one. As I bring the model strength up to two, it's closer to the stormtrooper, but still not quite right. But as we slowly build up to say 0.4, it's starting to get there. However, there's a few elements on the helmet that are not quite right. 
And finally, at point six, we can see it's our actual stormtrooper that we used in all the images. And of course, from then on, we got 0 0.8, we get that same stormtrooper. And of course, at a one, model strength of one, we get that stormtrooper exactly. So you've seen what this is all capable of. It's a pretty impressive system. And I think the results really speak for themselves. I think it's one of the best model trainings that I've seen out there. I've used stable diffusion based ones in the past and they're just not quite as good as this Flux model on OpenArt AI. So don't forget OpenArt are sponsoring this video. So I wanna thank them for sponsoring it. And there's a link in the description if you wanna check it out. Otherwise, thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you found it useful and interesting. If you did, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, I hope to see you again next time. Have a great day.